All right, let's finally understand eventual versus strong consistency and when you should be preferring one over another within your applications. Now, consistency is a very key element of distributed systems, so it's very important to understand and I'm gonna try to make it easy for you. So we're gonna start with a very simple example where you try to update your profile photo on Facebook. And I'm pretty sure it already happened to you where you do update your profile photo, but next time you refresh your page, you still get the old photo of yours. Now, in the background, the following is happening. The photo is getting saved in one of the databases. And let's assume we have three databases in three different geographical locations in our case. So the photo is in the Asian database. What's going to happen is it's going to take a while until this photo is propagated to other databases. Let's say five seconds here, maybe two seconds here, and eventually you're going to get your latest photo. Now, what's happening in the background is that the databases are writing this data into the log, and then this log is being sent to the replicas. Now, this is happening all in the background asynchronously, so databases are taking care of that. You don't have to really do that, so there's nothing, no code to show in this video, and you're gonna see that this is really useful in particular cases. In the second example would be updating your Amazon cart, right? You put an item into your cart, next time you refresh the page, you still don't have any items, but two seconds later, it then appears in your cart. As you can see, this is perfect for examples where you have tons of users using your application. So you want those users to be served very quickly. So you actually profit from being fast, being scalable, you can literally deploy as many databases as you want. You're always available, you never throw errors and the user never has to wait because you update your photo and you can go on with your other work, but you sometimes get stale data and uh, sequence is not respected. For example, if you update your photo two times in a row within two seconds, sometimes you would get the newest photo, sometimes you would get the second latest photo, so you get the idea. On the other hand, we have a case for strong consistency. For example, when you are dealing with financial applications such as banking, let's say you top up your account with 50 bucks and then next time you refresh the page, you still have zero bucks, this would drive people crazy. Or let's say in the stock market, you have to be very precise. Or for example, when booking airline tickets, right? You have to, you want to make sure that when one person books the ticket, the other person cannot book this, book this ticket at the same time, otherwise the plane would be overbooked. So one of them has to get an error. And this is done with the fact that one of the databases is going to be a leader database. And when the leader is updated, it's going to again propagate it to other databases. But the core difference here is that in the eventual consistency, we are, or in both cases, we're waiting for a commit, right? The eventual consistency, when we try to update the first database, so let's say this one, the first database, the first update to the first database has happened, the commit is already happened. So the database says, okay, your changes are saved. I'm gonna deal with the rest in the background. You don't have to worry of the, about that. Consider that your changes are committed. Compared to strong consistency, when the database is not going to give you a commit until all the changes are propagated. Now here's a caveat, not all the changes have to be distributed because you might have, I don't know, 50 databases and it would still take a while. Instead, the databases use this following algorithm. It's called Raft or it can also be Paxos, slightly different algorithm. And it basically means that the, at least more than half of the databases agree on the fact that the change has been propagated, all right? So the chances are high that if three out of five databases have the newest data, you're also going to get the newest data on the next refresh. Now let's go back to the backboard, blackboard and we're gonna understand that actually strong consistency is obviously consistent, consistent it's accurate, but slow because you have to wait until everything or at least more than half of the databases do have your update and it's hard to scale. Okay, in eventual consistency, you can just throw in new databases, but in strong consistency, you can have one of the databases is going to be the lead and the others are going to be replicas. So lead usually is the right database and you can have like right database per shard. So it's kind of, it's not horizontal scale scaling, it's literally vertical scaling. It's harder to scale. 
And examples of strong consistent, strongly consistent databases would be Oracle DB, MS Server, Postgres, but with the special settings with synchronous replication, you have to define it manually, or MySQL with group replication or InnoDB cluster. Because otherwise, the default MySQL and default po Postgres SQL are going to be eventually consistent. Also, Cassandra or Redis or Amazon Dyna DynamoDB, you see that more like NoSQL databases are rather eventual consistent because they don't support um, transactions over different geographical locations. It's more or less like on in the same location. And uh, scaling within eventual consistency is going to be hard, as I said, so or, or rather easy in eventual consistency, excuse me. And with the example of strong consistency, scaling is a bit harder. Now, I hope you guys learned something new. Let me know down in the comments if you did. And always, as always, smash like and subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.